doing are we are we ready to romance some monsters specifically the bracken because we're just gonna <clears throat> we're gonna dive right into it I didn't mean to go to my just chatting game room so whoop oh. One of those games. But hi Cinder, hi Anubis, hi Quaco. Hope you're all having an amazing day. Oh, did it crash? I think it crashed. <laughs> it was mad that I just left it. Okay, let's get it back open here. Okay, <clears throat> hold on. Adult content, yes. Uh, settings. Uh, I don't know if there's like a lot of music in this game. So if there is, hold on. I'm gonna pause Spotify. We're gonna go here. Is that wrong to kiss the bracket? Okay. Uh, now I there is an uncensored mode, but because you know we're streaming, definitely need to have <laughs> a censored mode on. <laughs> but yeah, Salem. I'm gonna the protocol. Please enter your first name. Blah, 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 blah. Yes. Oh, this is just like the game. She. Her. Yes. Bracken. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now I'm going to have to read everything out because this is technically a visual novel. Oh! Ooh. So I'm going to reposition my phone real quick so my model's going to look a little wonky. Sorry. Oh my god, it's just like a regular visual novel. It's so cute. I gotta slide myself back over. This is adorable so far. Ah, uh, yes, I believe the premise of your character is is that you, you know, get a new job and you just move to a new place. I sigh as I jump off the side of the rickety ship, boots kicking up a flurry of dust. Do I, is it? Space? Another day. Two undergrad degrees, one postgraduate, and a whole year of rejection emails. You know, I feel this. <laughs> Except for the degrees part. <clears throat> this is the best I can get. A rundown job doing God knows what in the middle of butt fuck nowhere, in a desperate attempt to pay off my student debt. I feel this. 
I collect scrap, drop it off, and receive payment. Rinse and repeat. Sighing, I unlock my phone to check my main group chat. It's my only solace keeping me in this keep, keeping me going in this monotony. Which is kinda sad now that I think about it. Affectionately named the Hot Monster Simp Chat. <laughs> oh my God, that's pretty much my Discord group. <laughs> Hi Suzuchi. Uh, they've asked me to keep them updated during my assignment on this new moon. Let's show you. Rude. I am too bullet, but hi. I scroll through the chat and peruse the, e the usual flood of way too sexy monster pics before typing out a response. Hey yo, landed safely. Immediately, I get a ping back from Ori. Of course you'd be the one to reply the quickest. Boops, yes, boops. But we're, this is, this is cozy romance game, so we're going cozy vibes today, so can't really see the boobs today. If you see any hot monsters, kiss them. Oh, we're gonna do more than that. I laugh and type out a response. This isn't fantasy stuff. Le like Merheus Hora from Elder Papyrus. <laughs> what, is that supposed to be like a play on Elder Scrolls? <laughs> I don't wanna die. Another fr another friend responds with a fake crying gif. That would be me. If sending that is pretty much. Chuckling to myself, I lock my phone and stash it in my pocket, turning to my teammate. Oh, okay. Okay, resume. What's the status? Can you romance Larry? Oh, real quick, before I keep going, I should shout out the creator. Hello, Yinny. Let me shout her out real quick. Let me tag or pin that and we're gonna do a quick shout out for her. There we go. Wait. There we go. They play a lot of Baldur's Gate. I love her content. She's fantastic. Go check her out. <clears throat> Apparently they made this game in 12 days, so <laughs> we'll see how this all is. <clears throat> Larry turns and brandishes his clipboard. We haven't worked together before, but people back at HQ say he's easy to get along with, which rings true so far. Plus, he's a great navigator and has experience with the freakish weather patterns among are common on alien moons. Everything looks good. The weather shouldn't be too bad for the duration we're here. Although, by my calculations, there's an 88% chance of a storm happening tomorrow morning. Oh, should we set the shields up? Nah, let's do it later. We can grab some scrap inside and then set it up when the sun isn't so harsh. Nodding, I strap on, my, on the essentials, a flashlight, and a walkie-talkie. When they're secure across my shoulder, I grab a shovel. Valid. Thanks, Larry. Luckily, we shouldn't be here for too long. The quota isn't much this time. Larry nods and gathers up his flashlight and shovel before jumping off the side, the side of the ship, kicking up dust as he lands. Also, if anyone knows that the, if there's like an actual category for this game, it's called, is it wrong to kiss the Bracken? Then, um, yeah. Let me know, because I don't, I don't think there is, since this is technically an indie game. I follow, looking up towards the looming building ahead. Experimentation. An abandoned moon that once held life. Not very dangerous compared to the likes of other moons, like Dine or Titan. I turn to Larry. We should be careful. Always am. I wonder, is Larry romanceable? I gotta know. 
I huff as I stagger back towards the door, holding a large crate of bottles and a bolt, my shovel balanced uh, precariously on top. Larry, I'm carrying stuff back to the ship. I'll hop on the terminal for a bit after. Okie dokie, pineapple pokey. <laughs> oh, man. Back on the ship, I organize the current loot we have and do a quick scan. 80 credits. Not bad for the first haul of the day. While I'm there, I jump on the terminal, bringing up the monitor to check Larry's location. Nothing around you at the moment, Larry. I keep an eye on this little dot walking around in the dark. Loop bug? Larry, be careful. Something's vented something's vented in an adjacent in an adjacent hallway. Excuse me. Shit, my flashlight's about to die. I can guide you, just be quick, okay? Okay, okay. You can get me out, right? Yeah, I can do this. I watch the red blip on the map slowly advance towards Larry. Approaching your six, hurry! I've watched on the monitor as Larry turns around, and whatever it is coming up behind him freezes in place. Ah, oh, it's a bracket. Larry, you okay? Fuck. I think I'm done for. What is it? My voice shakes. New creature data sent to terminal. It... It isn't moving. I've scanned it. My fingers fly across the keyboard, bringing up the file. I quickly skim the file. I... I think if you keep your eyes on it, it won't move. Oh, let me read this data. Info too. Um... Scientific name, Ver Colligaris. Ver Colligaris, or colloquially named coil heads, have not been studied extensively due to their extreme unpre unpredictability. Just stare at them or use a stun grenade. Oh it's, oh, it's a coil head. Oh, shit. Okay. What, like some weeping angel bullshit? Oh, I know that reference. Yeah. Hey, it'll be okay. I can see you on the monitor, remember? I'll guide you out. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's do this. I'm sorry for yelling. No, that's okay. You're all good. Go straight backward. Keep your hand on the wall and take the first right. I need to get Larry out of here. Larry staggers backward, slowly rounding the corner. The coil head springs forward at breakneck speed before freezing once it's in line of sight. Fuck. I know, I know. I'll get you out, I promise. Several more instructions and words of comfort later. Larry is almost out of the labyrinthine sprawl of hallways. Suddenly, a second red dot appears from a nearby vent. Oh shit. <laughs> oh no, is there two? Larry, something's vented a few hallways down, but we're almost there. Just keep moving. The dot rushes towards Larry. I need you to walk fast. You're just two turns away. Larry picks. Larry's speed picks up. The second red dot makes contact. Three things happen. I see Larry turn. The coil head rushes towards him. And finally, the walkie-talkie activates. But all I hear is a sickening spring sound. Larry? You there? Please say something. Hello? Silence. I shut off the terminal. I couldn't do it. I feel sick. Hours pass and I remain on the floor, slumped over with my head resting on the terminal. Here's my first choice. Head home with the autopilot. Grab the remaining. Yeah, get, I'm gonna lose money. I'm gonna go get the cargo. I should. I should go grab the items from the entrance. I slowly make my way to the front doors of the exper experimentation site building. Every step up the ladder is an ordeal as I leave my sluggish body up the up the rungs. I drag my feet across the dirt before pushing the door open with a loud creak. 
I gather the items left at the entrance. My muscles ache and slow with fatigue. A laser pointer, a crystal, and a jar of pickles. What was that? I look up. And make eye contact with the dark shape looming in the corner, watching me. Oh, there he is, guys. Oh, there he is. I fly into a panic, scrambling back against the door as it steps into view. Tall, humanoid, and dark in color, with glowing white eyes. Several leaf-like structures protrude, protrude from its back. Its eyes widen, and it takes a step forward. I need to distract it. My fingers grasp the crystal and toss it at the creature. It falls short, landing at its feet. It stops, staring at the gem as it skids to its feet within a cl uh, with a clattering sound. I take the chance to escape through the front door and sprint back towards the ship. I don't sleep well that night. Well, apparently Larry is not romanceable because he dies. Poor Larry. I'm awoken by the horrific sound of the aircraft shuddering. It creaks loudly as if the metal plating is barely holding together. The storm. In my state last night, I forgot to set up the protective shields. Shit. The ship rattles as the storm batters the metal exterior. I hear something tearing and landing on the ground with a heavy thud. I have no choice but to wait till the storm subsides. Bunkering down in my cot, I wrap myself in my blanket. The winds tear at the ship's exterior. The entire ship creaks and shakes, pebbles making horrific clanging sounds against the sheet metal. I check my phone to see if I can at least talk to my friends in the hot monster simp chat. No signal. Great. I cover my ears, close my eyes, and wait. Whichever claims me first, sleep or the storm, you can find me here. Several hours pass. After checking to make sure the weather is safe, I head outside to assess the damage. Well, shit. The ship is battered. The satellite on top is torn clean off and upside down in the dirt. There's a dark, black, viscous liquid draining out of the fuel tank. I rush inside to check the terminal comms and autopilot. Offline flashes on the screen in bold red letters. Damn it! I slap the terminal in frustration. Immediate regret sets in and I cradle my head. I need to find a way to repair this ship or I don't want to think about that or maybe I can find something usable inside the building. I'm not too worried about food, given that there's a water source and some edible flora and fauna on the planet. I'm more worried about what lurks inside the building. But given that Larry and I were the only two on this assignment, and Larry's gone. I have no choice but to face whatever's in there, alone. I spend the first part of the day inside the building, sticking close to the front exit and fire escapes. At least if anything comes for me, I have a chance of bolting. I avoid the labyrinth of hallways for now, but something feels strange, like something is watching me. I know it can't be Larry, but I don't want to think of it being anything else. I'm just paranoid. It's understandable. After what happened yesterday, there's nothing there. I mutter to myself, hell-bent on deluding myself so I can keep it together. <clears throat> there's nothing there. There's nothing there. There's nothing. I head my way back. I I head back the way I came, and stop. There's something on the floor. A bolt sits on the ground, alongside a laser pointer. Huh? I don't remember seeing these. I must have missed them or dropped them. I'm so tired. 
I just didn't realize, I guess. <laughs> it's a bracken. It's a, it's a bracken, buddy. <laughs> I pick up the items and head to the front door, depositing them outside before re-entering the building. Looks like like... Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Citaline, welcome in. Yes, it is the dating Bracken game. Let's go. One Town, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the Pleasure Palace. You are now one of my new love bites. Looks like I've cleared the front area. Seems like it's time to go further in. The bolts are useful and the sheet metal too. So if I can find more, maybe I can make some repairs. I flick on my flashlight and grip my shovel and step into the labyrinth of hallways. I made sure to open the necessary blast doors beforehand so it was easy to move around. You <laughs> love bites, yeah, welcome in guys. If you do exclamation point bite, you can see how many times I bite you. An hour passes dully and I sigh as I stumble over my sixth key. It's a lot of damn keys. <laughs> oh, you're missing an E there, friend. Can I just get something useful? That's when I hear it. Oh no! <laughs> I am so sorry, friend. Try it again. The shill creak of rusty hinges as the vent opens. I turn around and bolt towards what I desperately hope is an exit. It's not. Where's the exit? Where is it? Fuck, 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 fuck. I turn down the court. <laughs> I'm just getting so flustered already. I turn down corridor after corridor, the echo of my footsteps far too loud. A chill grips my spine when I realize it's not just my footsteps thundering down the hall. I turn. Oh shit, a horrific twang fills my ears and I stare into the worst thing imaginable. <laughs> Why did they have to give it that pose? <laughs> oh, let's go, baby. Yeah, baby, let's go. <laughs> the pale body unnaturally stiff arms, and a large coil topped with a banged up mannequin head. F fuck. It came right to me? <laughs> you know, we got an ad coming up in a minute, just, just so you guys know. When the ad comes up, I will, I will, I will pause. I don't want anybody to miss this. <laughs> the coil head that killed Larry towers over me, its head bobbing menace menacingly. As if fate had written to laugh at me. Or was written to laugh at me, excuse me. My flashlight flickers before going out. I'm fucked. I'm going to die some on some distant moon, working a shitty job that pays peanuts without ever making a dent in my ever-growing student debt. I'll never get to talk about how mitochondria from Wyvern Orb Z is hot with Ori and Chube over again. <laughs> oh my god. Help. I can barely get my voice above a whisper. Not that it would matter. There's no one to hear me. No one to help. Not even if I could be heard. I whimper and take a step back. My hand shaking as it traces the rough brick. Step by step, I move backward. Trying desperately to remember my way back. My fingertips scrape against the wall in desperation, and my eyes focus on the creature in the darkness. But the further I get, the less sure I am that I'm squinting at anything. I round the corner. Oh god, that startled me. <laughs> the, coil the coil head appears in my line of sight at a breakneck speed. The sound makes me jump. <laughs> that actually did startle me a little bit, so kudos guys, good job. I start crying. The sound of its spring bounces off the walls aggressively. I... I can't do this. I'm done. 
Oh, add time. We'll wait. Welcome back, everyone. I decided to wait for you all. I can't even say goodbye to my family or my friends. I take another step and stumble backward, falling. I close my eyes. I hear a loud crunch and my eyes fly open. The coil head hasn't made it to me. Something is keeping it at bay. Oh, he's not breaking! Let's go! I'm, I'm in the way. Where are you? There he is, guys! An aggressive growl reverberates off the walls, and gradually I make out the outline of a tall, black, humanoid gripping the coil head. Its claws rake down the creature with sickening with a sickening tear. Excuse me. The other monster that I saw yesterday. The one I tossed the loot at. Oh no, why are my why are my sound alerts working? But hello. Oh no no, don't be sorry. I just don't know why the, that that didn't work. Hold on. We're gonna we're gonna do a thing. Um We're gonna go here, we're gonna do the thing where we turn stuff off and on again. Uh let's see. Monitor and output. Then we'll, then we'll do that. Okay. And See sound alerts, monitor and output close. And let's test that one more time. Um let's see, that was the that was the Hello Salem or Hi Salem. Hello, beautiful. There we go. <laughs> uh nice. All right, let's continue. I stare at the scene, unmoving and dumbfounded. The creature crushes the coiled head's arms in its strong grip. I watch in fascination as the leafy tendrils on its back strain into blades. They extend, surging around the coil head, and then stab into it. I don't dare to breathe. Maybe it doesn't see me. Oh. Then a dull spring sound followed by a thump makes my eyes my eyes bulge. I don't know, something else we're gonna shit out bulging later. The creature ripped the coil head's head off. A hissing sound fills the air as the coil head's body behind shudders and crackles, emitting flames and a strange gas. This guy's better than me. I would have booked it. <laughs> Now's my chance. Oh, here we go. Now we're running. I attempt to scramble to my feet. Wincing as a sharp pain shoots at my ankle, of course. Fuck. I must have heard it when I fell. I start dragging myself forward, terrified. I just need to get far enough away so that I... The world flips upside down. My feet no longer touching the ground. Strong arms cradle me as my surroundings pass in a blur. Whatever has me, we're running from the exploding coil head. When I open my eyes again, I'm back at the entrance. I'm placed gently on the ground, my back r resting against the, the blah, 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 against the exit door. <laughs> oh boy. The leaf adorned creature crouches over me, almost looking concerned. Guaco, how dare you? You know what? You tried to fuck the bracken too, so I don't want to hear it. You tried to take both of its dicks and you died. I'm not dying today. Oh my! Uh, um... Wait! Why are there petals? <laughs> Is it 
purring? Oh my god. I am so going back and clipping that later. <laughs> Hi? It shifts closer and my eyes widen. Ooh. Nah. Hold still and stay calm. I stay frozen, maintaining contact as eye contact as it gently trills. I didn't ask for this. This claw coming up to softly grip my chin, turning my head from one side to another. I didn't ask for this. Are you checking if I'm hurt? It pauses and purrs as if to say yes. Um, this means yes. I demonstrate by nodding my head and then shaking it. And this one means no. I watch as it makes a soft, inquisitive sound before pointing to me and nodding tentatively. Oh, well, thank you. It chirps. Oh my God, it chirps, it's so cute. I try to stand, but my ankle still hurts. I yelp as it gathers me into its arms again. Hey, yo, let's go. Hey, you don't have to. Sunlight hits my face as it opens the door and walks outside. The realization that monsters could and can go outside does not make me feel any better. I curl up and lean my head against its chest as it steps over to the ledge. It emits a worried trill before cradling me closer. Then it jumps off the ledge, landing with a thud. The sound that escapes me is somewhere between a gasp and a gargled scream. What would that sound like? Like a wah! Gods, warn me next time. It rumbles apologetically, one of its claws softly rubbing back and forth on my skin. Hey, yo! Maybe it shouldn't be soothing, but it is. The creature walks towards the ship, stepping onto the ledge without using the ladder. This is so cute, oh my god. It sets me down on my sleeping cot before standing back up. Oh. Now that I get a good look at it, it's quite... big. I look down. Everywhere. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> uh, you know, same. Honestly, I don't, girly, I don't blame you. Real quick, I need to do a thing in VTube Studio. Uh, Record position, there we go. Ahem. <clears throat> I flush and look away from the substantial bulge. The group chat would have a field day. I can almost hear Ori screeching. If only the hot monster sim chat could see this now. The creature cocks its head. Hello, uh, Sid, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, it's nothing. Just talking to myself. Its shoulders relax. So, I don't mean to be rude, but what are you? The creature perks up, confused. Hmm, give me a moment. I step over to the terminal and check the data bank. The bestiary still works. Okay, hold still. The creature stands straighter and doesn't move, and I chuckle. <laughs> You're kind of cute. Oh my god, look, he's so, he's so cute. I love this. I bring my scanner up. It stiffens and pulls back, its stance becoming defensive. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I should have warned you. I lower the scanner. I'm gonna play this game now. It's free, it's free. It's on itch.io, go for it. I lower the scanner. It won't hurt you, I promise. It'll just help me know what to call you. 
the creature relaxes a little. I activate the scanner and it blips. New creature data sent to terminal. <laughs> Sigurd's danger level is 70%. Scientific name, Rapex Folium. A bracken? So you're a plant? It nods, the little leaf on its head bobbing. Exhibits high aggression even when unprovoked. You don't seem very aggressive. Oh, he's so cute. It lets out a soft rumble. I guess you're different than most. Thank you for saving me, by the way. I stretch out my hand and it looks at me, confused. Embarrassed, I withdraw my hand. I shuffle awkwardly for another moment before a yawn escapes me. <sighs> I'm exhausted. Today was a lot. For the third time today, the bracken scoops me into its arms. Hey! It deposits me back onto my sleeping cot, this time pulling the blanket up over me, including my head. I laugh. <laughs> I appreciate it, but blankets don't usually go over the head. It wraps its arms around itself. Is that a blush? <laughs> oh my god, I love this. But really, thank you. I smile with gratitude and watch the color deepen. Almost definitely a blush, then. It awkwardly shuffles out of the ship, nodding quickly before turning and heading back to the building. Hey, Guaco! <laughs> Thank you for the raid! Welcome in, raiders! Are you fucking the bracket? <laughs> Let me give you a quick shout out. Here you go. <laughs> How was your evil Baldur's Gate run? How was it? I just realized that you guys are not on screen. I had you guys removed because of another game I was playing. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thank you for the stretch and the hydrate. What? Fate! <laughs> Thank you so much for the raid. Welcome in, raiders. Hold on, I, I will also give you a shout out. <laughs> ah, but welcome in, raiders. My name is Salem and I am a bat succubus here at the Pleasure Palace. And you guys are now all my little love bites. Welcome in, welcome in. Guys, how was your, the lies in that raid message? Guaco killed Scratch, I can't believe it. I believe it's, Guaco is super evil. He would kill Scratch. He would. 100%. Because he's so smelly. Only sm people that smell that bad are evil. <laughs> Thank you so much for the follow. Welcome in. Why is there so much slander? Because you smell. Jesus Christ, fuck you. <laughs> but yeah, we are we're, we're playing is it wrong to kiss the bracken and let me tell you it is really cute so far so But y'all come in welcome get cozy. We're having a good time. I'm in cozy mode right now That's why we got the hair up the glasses and the sweater normally I have a little bit of a different look than this not by much though, but get cozy I'm gonna be narrating for you I apparent, I, I've been told I have a really nice voice to listen to, I guess. I don't know, maybe that's why I'm a VTuber <laughs> and have been for almost two years now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, come on, get cozy, enjoy it, or enjoy some romance. So I'm gonna take a sip of water. Hi, Raven. Welcome in. Also, just in case, if y'all want to stay, just make sure you're refreshing the page so then your view actually does count. <clears throat> oh. All right. We are going to continue on. But thank you again, guys. If you do have to raid and run, I completely understand. No worries. Self-care is best care. And also the same for your community that came in with you. <laughs> Uh, where were we? Let's see. It awkwardly shuffles out of the ship, nodding quickly before turning and heading back to the building. 
I listen to the howling from the eyeless dogs abruptly quiet. Abruptly quieten? Probably abruptly quiet, as the bracken emits an aggressive growl. Hi, Karasu. Uh, squat redeem is gone for right now, especially since I hurt myself. Sting spreading knowledge of the sneaky bat. Fuck you, Guaco. The blast door shut, and I settle into a deep sleep. I feel like this would be a fun VOD to put on YouTube. <laughs> Day three, kiss, kiss, fall in love. I wake to the squawking of, of the manticoils outside and sit up, stretching my arms. Hi, Fell. Uh, Fell, let me give you a quick shout out. There you go. <clears throat> Are you doing art last time? Nice. <clears throat> wow. I slept well. I quickly brush my teeth, eat a granola bar, and chuck some water. Hydrate, everybody. I'm going to need more sheet metal today if I'm going to repair this ship. Mother, why do you smell so much? I am in complete utter shock of how much you smell like. You've been hanging around Guaco too much, my son. How dare you? I open the blast doors, shielding my eyes from the harsh sun. Grabbing my flashlight and shovel, I step out onto the metal platform. As I trudge over to the ladder, I spot the bracken from yesterday, sitting on the edge of the upper platform. Oh, there he is! I wave at it and chuckle as it stares back confused. I don't suppose it knows human greetings. I quickly ascend the blah, 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 blah. I quickly ascend the ladder and jog over to the tall black cryptid. I can't help but relish in, uh, the soft grumbles as it emits a greeting. Are you waiting for me? A soft rumble tells me that the answer is yes. I smile. Oh, we got protection now. Let's go. I head inside the building, and to my surprise, it follows behind. The first hour is spent gathering scrap in complete peace. No monsters approach us, and the bracken even points out scrap to me or brings me items on its own. <laughs> You're like a cute guard dog. Oh, <laughs> I laugh, and the bracken emits a soft, happy rumble. I take a step forward but my foot catches on something sticky. Oh, here we go. I fall straight into a giant spider web. Ah! I try to break free, but get more tangled. The hairs on the back of my neck stand as I hear a gross, skittering sound. A giant spider appears from the hallway and barrels towards me. God, that is hilarious. I love this game so much. I need to go give Yenny money. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, let me shout her out again real quick. She is the creator of this game. Made this with her with a small group of people in 12 days. So uh, 10 out of 10. Highly recommend. This game is free, by the way. Free. Oh, you're welcome, Phil. <clears throat> Someone was like, fuck, no, I'm not trying that. I believe Yinny actually did uh, all of the character art and then uh, someone else that she knows did all of the background art. So, <clears throat> so nope, she did not want to draw the spider. <laughs> <clears throat> all right, serious mode, here we go. <clears throat> I freeze. Fortunately, I told the company that I had arachnophobia before I started. <laughs> I scream anyway. It doesn't even get close. I hear a sickening rip and squelch as the bracken launches itself forward, bringing its foot down to stomp into the spider's head. 
Its clawed hands holds one of the spider's severed legs in its grip. The spider screeches before shriveling into itself. The bracken returns quickly, eyes furrowed, uh, furrowed in concern as it gently cuts me from the web with its sharp talons. This, this is the second time you've saved me. What would I do without you? I laugh weakly as the bracken gently grips my shoulders, leaning down to my eye level and chirping. Rip and scold you, Mr. Bracken. <laughs> Die, I suppose. I'm okay. Because of you. This is so cute. Hug the bracken. We're hugging it. I hear a soft, anxious sound emanating from the bracken's chest. Its body trembles as its claws gently reach for me. Hey. It whines and steps closer, looking down over me. I move close, wrapping my arms around its middle as it stiffens. Hey, it's okay. I'm okay, see? It steadies as one of its arms wraps around my waist, tugging me close to its body. I feel the gen uh, the gentle press of its claws cradle my back, cradle the back of my head as it nuzzles my hair. Nothing happened, because you are here to protect me, remember? I feel it nod and press me impossibly closer. I rub gentle circles against its back with my hand. Thank you for keeping me safe. It stops trembling, emitting a soft purr instead. After a while, I entangle myself from its arms, giving its hand a soft squeeze. I move to pick up my scattered items, and I watch it heap a bunch of scrap into its large arms. I think I'll head back early for today. Could you give me a hand? It nods enthusiastically, and we head back to the exit to grab the rest of our scrap. A little later, we drop off the vast or the last of the scrap on the engine. Uh, the Bracken places several places down several V8 engines it was carrying on its own. Having you around has been a great help. It's so blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I suddenly can't talk. It's soft trill makes me smile and the creature bends down for me to pat its head gently. It's only 4 p.m. so we've got some time before things get scary. It points to itself, a low growl emanating loudly enough that I can feel it buzz the air buzz through the air from its place beside me. <laughs> That's really cute. The racket is too hot. Uh-huh. Exactly. Are you saying I'm safe with you around? So let me put you guys actually back up on the screen. There we go. A soft rumble and a tentative nod. I don't doubt it, but we should be careful nonetheless. Oh! That reminds me. It had nodded. It was communicating. Let me teach you some greetings and stuff. The creature leans back slightly, turning its body towards me inquisitively. Come along. We'll sit somewhere a little nicer. I motion the bracken over as I exit the ship, climbing the nearby ladder to the top of the water tank. Run into the giant. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I sit at the edge, facing the sun and letting the warm rays bask us in a golden glow. The bracken plots, blah, blah, plops itself next to me, a pleasant sound rolling from its chest. Okay, so, this means maybe. I spend the hour, the next hour or so teaching it different greetings and gestures. So waving is how we say hello, but also how we say goodbye. I explain while demonstrating the movement and laugh as it mimics my actions. You already know what nodding and shaking your head means. Hmm. What else can I teach you? What else can we teach it, Chad? What else can we teach it? Huh? Huh? What else? We 
we gonna kiss? I'm, I was fucking. Let's teach him. Let's go. Also, I don't know why Automa wanted to get is wanted to fucking auto mod the word kiss. That's weird. The <laughs> gawk gawk 9000. It's gluck gluck. Excuse you. What else can I teach you? Ooh, save. Resume. Ooh. <laughs> Demonstrate a high five. This is romantic. Okay. Oh. High-fiving is a show of friendship and victory. I hold up, I hold its hand up and gently clasp mine against it. <gasps> oh. See? I hold my hand up again, and this time it reaches forward. But instead of a quick tap, it intertwines our fingers together and leans closer. Its body draws closer to mine. Th that means something different. My face feels hot. It doesn't let go. Um. It leans in closer, bringing its face to my eye level. God, it really is cute. Might even be better than the brain flare from Ball's Gate 3. <laughs> okay. No, <clears throat> serious, romantic. Okay. <clears throat> I jump a little as it frees, as its free arm wraps around me, hand pre pressing against the small of my back. It presses our foreheads together, and a hum reverberates quietly from its chest. Here, let me. Bringing both my hands up to cradle its face gently, before pre pressing my lips to its mouth. This. This is how you show you like someone, as more than a friend. The bracket emits a high-pitched sound before it surges forward, brushing against my lips again. It pulls me closer, one of its hands gently gripping my shoulder. One of my hands slides down its shoulder, then down over its, the corded muscles to stroke its forearm. We stay there for a while kissing in the warmth of the setting sun. It's getting dark. The Bracken nods before pointing at me, then at the ship. I, I should, but hanging out with you is fun. I hear a soft rumble as the Bracken tugs my sleeve, motioning to the setting sun and then back to the ship. <sighs> yeah, I know, I know. I should get back. It gets dicey at night. It na it sadly nods. Just, you know, invite us in, man. I'll see you tomorrow. First thing in the morning. I stand and stretch my limbs before climbing down the ladder and head back to the ship. I watch the bracken, wondering if it'll follow me, but instead, it, but it instead walked towards the building. It waves. And the movement is still a little awkward. Unsure. Good night. I wave back as it walks inside the building. Back inside the ship, I seal the blast doors and step out of my suit. I eat a couple more granola bars before showering and brushing my teeth, flopping straight into my cot right after. I still don't have a signal yet, so I can't inform the hot monster simp chat about my makeout session with a strangely hot monster I'm acquainted with on this distant planet. Thinking about the bracken instead, I blush and trace my lips with my fingers. This is wild. That night, I dream of soft kisses, claws gently holding me in a cute seven foot tall plant monster day four am i delusional or can i really be happy in this new world bullet you missed our makeout session with the monster a gentle knocking rouses me from my slumber 
as I sit up and realize it's a faint thunking noise rapping against the blast doors. I drag myself over and open the blast doors. Instead of the sun hitting my face, I'm swallowed up by the large shadow of the bracken, bending down to fit into the frame of the door and one clawed hand grasping at the top edge of it. Hot. Oh, he's doing that pose. Oh, God. Yeah. Hi. Couldn't wait for me to show up, huh? The bracken nods, the movement a little more sure and practiced than yesterday. It ducks slightly and steps into the ship and makes an inquisitive sound. Hmm. I'm not sure what to do today. God damn it, Guaco. I guess we could take a day off work and just hang out here. An affirmative purr makes me laugh. As long as I can find out. Oh, no worries, Bullet. No oh, worries, soothing. Oh, I'm so glad. You focus on getting better. It's been a while since I've taken a day off. Come to think of it, I haven't explored this planet much. Want to go check it out? An affirmative chirp groups to my ears. We set off to explore the building's surroundings. I point out the manticoils, watching them skate around oddly with their wings spread out. The bracken chases off a baboon hawk as it gets too close, and I laugh as the offending creature bounds away squawking. We even come across several random giant pumpkins just sitting there. Huh. So it's, that, it's exactly like the pumpkins on Earth, just huge. I cut a wedge of pumpkin and stash it in my bag. I can roast pumpkin for dinner tonight. Wait, do you eat? <laughs> Quacko, thank you. I watch the bracken cock its head to the side and shrug. I mean, if you're a plant, do you photosynthesize, I guess? It shrugs again. Well, I still need to eat, so I'm cooking this tonight. It makes a soft chortling sound, its shoulders shaking again. Are you laughing at me? It nods, and I can't help but laugh too. I'll have you know, eating food, although annoying, is a great time. You can make wonder many wonderful dishes. It rolls its eyes as if telling me that I'm the one with the skill issue. You're getting cheeky, aren't you? I yelp as it pokes me in the side. Oh, I would do that. I'm, in I'm incredibly ticklish. After a couple hours of exploring, including checking out a random house that looks like it spawned out of thin air, we head back to the ship. <laughs> All right, let's get the party started. Sit, no, not allowed. We head inside the ship and I busy myself with seasoning and roasting the pumpkin. The bracken stands there awkwardly before coming over to see what I'm doing. You can make yourself at home, you know. Have a look around. It wraps its arms around my waist instead, holding me close. I blush. The scene is oddly domestic, and I'm surprised at how much I like it. I wonder if we could stay like this forever. I press myself back into its chest and it bends over to rest its head on my chin. We then sit at the little table and chat while I eat. It pokes fun at me now and then. Yeah, yeah, you can just stand in the sun for sustenance. It makes a little chortling sound again. You're lucky you're cute. I don't let anyone tease me like this. I swear it's beaming with happiness. Oh look, there's candles, that's cute. I finish up eating and wash the dishes. My thoughts constantly drawn back to the haunt monster inside my ship. How would a relationship between us work anyway? I mutter quietly to myself as I dry the dishes and put them away. My eyes flick to the terminal in the corner of the ship. Wipe my Bubba. <laughs> Wiping my hands on a small towel, I shuffle over to the machine. Ta 
tapping on the keys, I bring up the Bracken's file on the bestiary again and scroll through. Does it... Fuck. <laughs> Why am I even looking this up? Let's see, the data says, no scientists has, have observed more than one Bracken living in the same space at any one time. It is unknown how it reproduces. I feel like I'm being intrusive. A soft twinkling sound comes from over my shoulder and I turn only to be face to face with the very monster I'm thinking of horizontally <laughs> tangoing with. <laughs> Incredible. Nah! I fly back and bump my head on the terminal and pain bursts across my skull. Ow! I feel clawed hands cradle my face and my eyes stare into the concerned white ones. I'm okay. You just startled me is all. It whimpers. Hot. Does it whimper while f uh, f focus? Wait, don't be sad. I'm not mad. I was just lost in thought. The bracken looks up at me, wringing its clawed hands together nervously. I step forward and make its and take its hands in mine. Seriously, don't worry. You didn't do anything wrong, okay? A startled squeak escapes me when it leans down, engulfing me in a hug. It rubs its cheek against mine, kissing me on the forehead. It, you're a lot more affectionate now. It's not a bad thing, I just... It's my turn to blush as it gently runs its mouth along my hand, kissing each finger. My breath catches. You learn fast. It chirped before backing away, moving to stand at its full height, looking curiously around the room. It makes the space inside the ship look smaller. It walks over to the terminal, pressing a button curiously. I watch it move over the hanging LED lights against the wall, poking one with its clawed fingers. Those are some lights I got to, I got to make the place look a little more cozy. I read that wrong, but oh well. They're not much, but they make it feel more at home. The bracken nods, and my eyes widen curiously as it spies the blue boombox resting on the floor. Oh, this one is a boombox. I move to press the button, and music fills the ship. <laughs> it plays fun tunes like this, and you can dance to it. The bracken tilts its head. Do you know how to dance? It shakes its head. Here, like this. Oop, didn't mean to do that. Resume. I start to bend my knees, doing a little, quart little quarter squats before pushing my palms out and retracting them one by one in time to the music. Oh, I know, it's doing the, oh yeah, yeah, it's doing that dance, okay. Or we're doing that dance. I'm not very good at dancing, but as long as you're having fun, I'd say that's what matters. I change my hand movements into fists, moving them up and down. The bracken clumsily copies my movements moving its arms stiffly. There you go. I move forward and take the Bracken's hands, resuming the dance with our fingers entwined. <laughs> yes, up and down. I laugh as we dance together, the Bracken getting more used to the movements the more time passes. I teach it to twirl and we attempt the world's worst waltz, even mockingly bowing at one another at the end. We dance late into the night, eventually squeezing into, a, into the tiny cot together and falling asleep. Good night. I really enjoyed today. It cuddles closer, a clawed hand stroking down my back, gently dipping under the hem of my pajamas to trace the bare skin. For the first time since arriving here, I don't need the heater. Ooh. <laughs> Did 
day five. Why do I feel like I'm in an anime? We walk over to the building, my hands shielding my eyes from the harsh morning sun. It's so fucking hot. I run to the shade, ducking into it. The relief it provides isn't nearly as much as I'd hoped. We did not, actually. We just, we cuddled and, and we cuddled with and just slept next to it. We, d we didn't do nothing yet. The Bracken, on the other hand, doesn't seem to mind the heat at all. The Bracken stands in the sun happily, basking in the rays. It motions me over and I push off the wall, reluctantly joining it under the oppressive heat once more. I reach up and hug the Bracken before pulling back and placing both my hands on its face. Balancing on my tiptoes, I guide the creature down for a kiss. It all it seems all too happy to oblige me. As I run my hands along the sides of its face, I notice a few tiny white blossoms on the tips of its shoulders. Come to think of it, its whole body looks a little more greenish than before. You've been in the sun more lately, haven't you? The bracken nods, the small leaf tendrils on its head bobbing up and down. It's adorable. Oh, kind of like with my wings. Look. Yeah, that's the only thing that wiggles. It suits you. The happy rumbling reverberates from it and we head out to collect scrap for the day. We spend a few hours collecting sheet metal, bolts, and scrap. We even find a few cans of unopened soda. As time goes by, however, I find my mood sinking lower and lower. Why am I even doing this anymore? There's not much else waiting for me back there, save for a shitty job with shitty pay and a whole fuck ton of shitty debt. Yeah, only my wings, Guaco. Why, why would you assume anything else? Oh, I guess my hair, too. And my ears. <clears throat> Do I even want to leave anymore? Is there much point in collecting stuff to try and fix the satellite so I can send a signal to the company? I look up. Prompted by a soft whine, the Bracken is watching me, concerned. I'm okay. Just... thinking. It tugs my sleeve and cocks its head, gently patting my head before picking up all the scrap, carrying it to the exit. I follow along, curious. We arrive at the ship and it dumps the scrap into a little pile. The Bracken then turns to me and holds up one finger. One? It nods and then points to us both, then the ship. Hang out in the ship? An affirmative chirp. But then it holds up two fingers. Two. Another nod. And this time, it points once again to us both before, before pointing back to at the building and then back at itself. Hang out in your room? It nods, pleased with its communica communicating abilities. Hey, go to the Bracken's room. Let's go. Oh, oh guys, it's happening. It's happening. It's happening. Hello. Beautiful. <laughs> Hi, Guaco. I guess we could go to yours. I don't think I've seen it before. I grab some items from the ship before we head back inside the building. I walk through the hallways without much trouble, and I eventually enter a large room with beige walls. Oh. So, this is where you sleep? The Bracken nods. I look around, there's a pile of blankets in the corner, and are those my lights? I see the fairy lights from my ship. They're not plugged in, but laying on the floor, carefully arranged. I watch the Bracken wring its hands together before it reaches a hand forward, gently stroking my face and then bringing my hand to their heart. Did you do this to make me feel at home? Those are some lights I got to make the place look a little more cozier. They're not much, but they make it feel more at home. 
it nods. You're so wonderful, you know that? Kit chirps happily. I have an idea. I think I accidentally skipped some dialogue. Oh shoot. The bracken cocks its head as I move to lie on the blankets, reaching into my bag for the two books I brought along. Oh no, NSFW, let's go. Grab the demon king wants to marry me. Uh, just letting you know, you've toggled censored mode. This means upcoming siege, you will have the Bracken's whim wham censored. The text, however, will still be explicit. Uh, wait, okay. <laughs> Kawako, stop. Um, okay, yep, continue. I just can't show the whim wham, but I can read stuff. Let's read something. I hold a book up titled, The Demon King Wants to Marry Me. My friends back home told me it was a good read, and they gifted it to me before I came here. I know something else that's going to be coming soon. Something about it being so like me, or whatever. The Bracken six nets, blah, 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 sits next to me, curiously eyeing the comic in my hand. I open the pages and we read together. The first chapter shows the main character being spirited away to another world, only to be in the presence of the great Demon King. Or this whole next part in the Kermit. I refuse. We're doing it in my voice. <clears throat> Get flustered, all of you. Get ready. <clears throat> this is so cliche. I'm almost offended my friends thought of me when they saw this. I feel a clawed hand trace my lower back and I shiver a little. The next chapter shows the two characters getting married, the human much smaller than the large demon king. Okay, I guess their dynamic is interesting. The Bracken kisses me on the cheek and I smile. I turn a couple more pages. The wedding banquet scene is pretty funny. They even managed to fit in a jealous marriage objection too. I feel the Bracken watching as I turn the next couple of pages. My eyes widen and I gasp. Oh boy. I watch as it cocks its head, attempting to peer at the book. Nope, nothing to see. It was just really bad. <laughs> uh, a nervous laugh slips out. Fuck you, Guaco. And the Bracken squints its eyes, not believing me. It reaches for the book, its large hand pinning me down. Oh. Hey. I whisper as my face burns like it's on fire. The Bracken takes my moment of stunned silence and grabs the book, flicking through the pages. I cover my face with my hands. Oh, I would do that. The book is filled with depictions of the Demon King and absolutely railing his new spouse in various positions. The Bracken stares at the pages intensely, taking in the sights of the human pleasured, gasping face, and the images of the Demon King thrusting his rather large appendage inside them. See? It's kind of trash. I don't get to finish my sentence as the Bracken tosses the book to some corner, crawling over me. So, you liked the book? I laugh nervously as it huffs, moving down to kiss me softly. My arms encircle its torso, eagerly kissing back. Our mouths move against each other, and I gently run my fingernails down its chest, squeezing my hand. Damn, what bra size do you wear? <laughs> Fucking ruined the moment! What the hell? Why did I say that? Ignore me. It shrugs and resumes kissing me. Harder this time. I traced my hand up the Bracken's body before pushing against it gently. Wait, let me. It sits up, a little confused and I push it back further. I swing my leg over its thighs and situate myself on its lap, pressing my chest against it. Hmm. I run my lips along its neck, 
kissing gently and trailing my lips down its collarbone. The bracken hums, a new, deeper sound I haven't heard before, as it brings its arms up and around me and pulls me closer. I respond by shifting my hips back and forth slowly. Ooh. Oh! Silva! Welcome in! Welcome in, Raiders! Thank you so much for the raid! You guys are just in time! You guys are just in time. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna bang the bracken. You're playing Genshin, but welcome in Raiders. If you guys don't know me, my name is Salem and I am a bat succubus here in the Pleasure Palace. And we are about to uh, fuck the bracken. Run and it's now starting. <laughs> Bye Silva. Thank you again for the raid. Have a good night. All of you, everyone get cozy, get comfy as I use my very soft, lower soothing voice as we read this out. <clears throat> I'll read this line again. I respond by shifting my hips back and forth slowly. It makes a choking sound and I smirk. Thank you for the stretch and the hydrate. I let out a soft gasp as the creature's hands engulf my waist, its claws lightly digging into my sides as it hoists me upwards and, in a few swift moves, removes my clothing. Oh, shoot, I, oh, I, I accidentally skipped that dialogue. Fuck, I'm sorry. It presses its mouth against my lips and I tilt my head, deepening the kiss. How would this work? I don't see anything. Nope, I can't go back. Oh, wait, I can. I accidentally did that. Oh, there we go. I would like to come back down now. Oh, because those are the key for the key binds I have for this. Okay, I'm just gonna be up for a second. My legs wrap around its waist, arms hanging over its broad shoulders as it nuzzles into the crook of my neck. A full body shudder reverberating through its bulky frame. Okay, there we go. I don't see anything. I stare inquisitively at the smooth bulge between its legs and place my hand on it. Where's its... Does it even have... As I lose myself in thought, the bracken seems to read my mind. I feel a shudder run up its body as its crotch begins to unfurl like a blooming plant, allowing two thick ridged rods to protrude between its legs. A clear substance is trickling slowly from the tips. Underneath the rods, there is also an opening. There's two? Oh. The bracken chirps inquisitively, and my face burns. Nothing. I just didn't expect two. Its shoulders deflated a little. That's not a bad thing. It's good. Really good. Oh my god. Oh wow. Holy shit. Oh, divines. Oh my god. It's absolutely schlanging. Hot monster simp chat would scream if they saw this. I crawl over to the bracken and gently push it back to lay against the pillows. It blinks. Confused. Here. Let me just... Oh boy. <laughs> I stick my tongue out and lick a, straight, a strip up one of them, lapping up a clear bead of liquid before it can trickle down. A shudder runs through its body, one of its hands coming up to rest over its eyes as it bucks upwards. It's sweet. I run my tongue up again before wrapping my lips around and gently suck. The clearish liquid is incredibly sweet tasting almost like nectar. The bracken rumbles from its chest. You're full of surprises, aren't you? I resume my ministrations and it lets out a strangled sound. I reach up, wrapping my hand my hand around its second length, stroking up and down. God, I'm rewarded with the rough buck of its hips and its clawed hand. 
That startled me. <laughs> Lucy, you shouldn't be watching. <laughs> Yaking pleasantly. Its other hand braces against the wall behind it, and it lets out a filthy sounding whine. Mm. Drool trickles from my lips, and it presses my head downwards, its length bumping into the back of my throat. It keeps its hand on the back of my head, thrusting up desperately as I choke around its size. I can do this! It growled, its growls becoming more frequent, paired with several whimpers. As the hips buck up against me, the hand braced against the wall comes down to stroke my face lovingly. I hollow out my cheeks and suck harshly. It growls, its claws releasing me to fist desperately at the blankets. Oh! After a couple more thrusts, it lets out a low whine, keen, and spills more clear liquid from both of its lengths. I swallow everything in my mouth before releasing it and wiping my hand on the blanket. Does hitting climax mean the same thing as meeting Pluto? Oh my god, that was an incredible timing. <laughs> Lucy, you and I need to have a conversation later. <clears throat> I crawl onto its lap, kissing down its cheekbones, and my arms wrapping around its upper body. Its hands run down my body, claws lightly scratching down my sides before gripping my hips and lifting me. I gasp softly as I feel the heads of its lengths rub against my entrance. I know what happened to Guaco, and as much as I want to do this, I don't want to die. Maybe it's best to go with one for the first time. It's so big, it could spit roast me on its own with a single one. Believe me, believe me, I would I would go for the two, but I saw what happened to Guaco. I don't want to die. It kills you. I gasp as it pushes the tip of one inside me. My hands are ex instinctively flying up to grip its shoulders. It tilts its head to the side, the hands tightening its grip on my waist before rolling upwards experimentally. Oh. The bracken's eyes widen as it shallowly thrusts against the cot, again causing more breathy sounds to escape my lips. I am not going to demonstrate that. As if feeling a surge of confidence, it sets a rhythmic pace. I can feel the ridges of its length rub against inside me, my walls fluttering around it as I gasp and moan. Its grip tightens ever so slightly the tips of its claws digging into me pleasurably. It's good. <laughs> I couldn't, I could I had, I had to do it, sorry. My hips buck upward to meet its thrusts and I hear it growl softly, the sound reverberating in its chest. Are walls supposed to... <laughs> um, no comment. I clench my eyes shut in pleasure, head thrown back, moans echoing off the walls. It nuzzles its head into the crook of my neck, purring intensely. I cry out as it hits a spot inside me that renders me whimpering pathetically. Oh. Yeah, I'm not doing any of those noises. I don't want to get I don't want to get banned off Twitch. Sorry guys. As it continues to snap its hips against me, my eyes shoot open when I feel the sensation of something cool and smooth slithering up around my thighs and arm. What is that? I look down, surprised, as I spy dark green vines curling around my upper thighs to keep me in place. Oh, Jesus, what did that? Um, <clears throat> the other tendrils wrap around my arms, pulling them and restricting them above my head. I let out a choked noise as it practically folds me in half, roughly driving into me, its hands pressing my thighs apart onto the blankets. I whine as my hands ring desperately, pulling against the vines, my actions are rewarded with a low rumbling growl and its claws gently digging into my skin. I let out a low whimper as the bracken angles itself, driving the blunt tip of its length into a spot that has me seeing stars. Fuck! 
It's all too happy to oblige as I feel the vines tightening their grip as a new tendril coils itself around my neck. Oh boy. Mm. The bracken lets out an inquisitive trill in response and motions to the vine around my throat. <laughs> Gently, okay? It nods and I feel the vine tighten, just barely restricting my breath. And I lose myself. The bracken resumes its rough pace, fingers intertwined with mine. I feel the vines restricting me, the smooth tendrils leaving me at the mercy of this creature. My back arches, eyes teary as I whine and reach my peak. It meets my gaze, staring intently into my eyes as it braces itself above me. The bracken releases my wrists and I wrap my arms around its broad shoulders, moaning into the crook of its neck. Its body tenses. Gods! I barely have time to speak as I hear it growl into my ear before it slams into me, driving me back into the blankets. <laughs> my body, oversensitive from my previous climax, feels even hotter my hands scrambling to find purchase on its thick forearms. The bracken's growls get louder, its body shuddering as it ruins, as it run, ruins me to chase its climax. I, saw, I softly keen, eyes teary and breathing heavily as it nuzzles its face into the crook of my neck before it bites down. Herk. I string a lot of sound, half between a groan of pain and pleasure as I feel sharp teeth sinking into the juncture between my neck and shoulder possessively. It's hit shudder and I feel it releasing inside me, thrusting a couple more times before it collapses on top of me. It softly rumbles as it begins to nuzzle at the bite apologetically. You're okay. I gently pat its head, fingers brushing over the little leaves on top of its head. It rolls us over and pulls me close, tugging the blanket over my tired body. <laughs> yep, you don't say, Nightbot. I lay there, head resting on the brackens as I look up into its eyes. Its eyes are lidded into little half-moon shapes as it stares adoringly at me. A soft purr sounds from its chest. You're like a cat. I laugh and snuggle closer, feeling its other arm wrap me, wrap around me protectively. As I drift off to sleep, cocooned in the warmth of a soft blanket and my strange cryptid lover, I sigh. I think I'm gonna hand in my resignation. Quota filled. If you know, you know. <laughs> Two months later. So yeah, we've been really happy ever since. I'm sitting in a group call with the Hot Monster Simp Chat crew. After some time, we managed to restore the signal. So can you show us the hottie you're in love with? Only if it's okay with it. I motion for the Bracken to come over. It stands in front of the camera waving awkwardly. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's pretty cute. The bracken kneels to kiss me on the cheek. The group check explodes in awes and a single gross. But seriously, we thought you were dead. Everyone on earth, including your work, thinks you perished. I mean, Chub, even we thought she was dead. We even built her a shrine in finite <laughs> daydream 14. <laughs> Nothing like legally dying to get all of your debt erased. All according to Keikaku. I whisper to the bracken. Keikaku means plan. A flash of peace sign, or I flash a peace sign as the chat groans. So you're just staying there? Yeah, I'm much happier here with my love anyway. Plus, the company designated this planet as a as barren, so I doubt they'd even come looking for me. Man, I want to get stranded on a deserted planet and meet a hot monster too. <laughs> Maybe one day. Until then, you've got Narcus from Ballsgate 3. 
<laughs> anyway, I gotta go. It's date night. We say our goodbyes and I hang up the call. I sit next to the bracken on the bed. I giggle as it pushes me down gently before climbing on top of me, kissing my neck. Needy, I wasn't even gone for long. That's why I love you though. The bracken chirps and taps its claw three times against my heart, telling me the same. Its claws run up my legs, enveloping my waist before it tugs at my shirt. I smirk. I think, think you can do that thing you did last night again. Its eyes widen before it pins my wrists to the bed. I laugh, shut my eyes, and enjoy the ride. The end. That time I got transported away to be a monster's love on a distant planet. <laughs> oh man, that was awesome. Amazing. Apparently the Bracken is not the only one that you can romance. There's, I think like two, maybe three other monster or love interests. You've, yeah, I know the coil head. Um, I'm not sure. Glad you didn't forget the D. <laughs> Can't forget the D. Well, this song is a bop. Yeah, it made it in 12 days. Honestly, that's not like this is impressive that they did it in 12 days. And it's for free. They could have charged. But they didn't. Slime or Nutcracker or Loop? I don't know. That's a good question. Music, sound. Um. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Actually, let me go to... Um... The itch.io page, or yeah, itch.io page. Um, is it wrong to kiss the bracken? Um, let's see. Three roots, platonic, it's safe for work romance, NSFW romance. Six endings, seven CGs, sensor mode to sensor NSFW art. Uh, approximately one hour of playtime. We stretch it out into about an hour and four. 30 minutes ish um let's see uh, yeah i think you just have to make it clear or like in the beginning because you type in like what your favorite monster is uh so of course we did the bracken at first because it's the bracken but yeah, I think the coil head is a romance option. Actually, let's get our music back up on here. Um, yeah, I'm not 100% sure what all the other options are. Hmm. But that was it. <laughs> I hope you guys had fun. I did. It was really cute. Uh, but we're gonna take. We're gonna go ahead and looking it up. Oh, okay, cool, cool. While you do that, I am probably gonna look for someone to raid because I plan on just chilling for the rest of the night. But again, it's free. In fact, you know what? I will put the link here in chat. The download, uh, download leak is at the very bottom. Just scroll all the way down. Mm, let's see. Hmm. Who 
to raid. Hmm. Uh, you know, like, I do have some friends that are live, but I kind of... There's someone else I kind of want to raid. They are a big... They are a big streamer. And I kind of want to make it more of a habit to, like, raid some bigger streamers. Let me see how long they've been streaming. Because it's... It's not a bad thing to do. It's just like another way to like potentially like network and get get more exposure and that's not like necessary necessarily a bad thing. Uh, you know what? I kind of want to raid Joel, porcelain maid. That's what I want to do, but I, we're going to we're going to we're going to come up with like a uh, a custom raid message. Let's see. Okay, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. Raid the hot bisexual wet dream. Exactly, exactly. Vermont's best dream. <laughs> Do y'all know that story of where the Vermont thing came from? Okay, so uh, there's a streamer named Michael Bryan. He kind of became a little bit popular on TikTok because he used uh, the closet shovel in Baldur's Gate 3. And he has like a voice that he does for shovel. Um, anyway, so I went on one of his streams. Then one of the things that he does right at the very beginning, he goes like, a saw, dude. So anyone who uh, does that redeem, he said, he's like, a saw, whomever. So he got to me. He's like, a saw, Salem, Vermont, because VT is <laughs> Vermont. <laughs> now, I don't know if, and I tested it twice. He did it twice. So I don't know if he just thinks that I'm a big fan of the state of Vermont or if he knows that means VTuber and he's just like, whatever vtuber i'm gonna fucking make fun of you either way it makes me laugh but there's our custom raid message um and we yeah i think we're gonna raid we're gonna raid joel why not porcelain made joel is a good time we like joel we 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 love joel in this house Oh no, I didn't, I, I thought that, <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> wait, hold on. Now you can use it, hold on. There you go, friendo. Now you can use it. But thanks for hanging out, everyone. <laughs> We're gonna go hang out with Joel for a hot minute and then I am gonna be chilling. I'm probably gonna just gonna go play some Baldur's Gate. <laughs> you, I beat you to a guaco. I know you were thinking about it. So, ha, but have a great night, everyone. So good to see you. And I will see you guys possibly Monday. I will put the new schedule out both on Twitter and in the Discord. So, cause I start my new job next week. So yeah, but have fun hanging out with the bisexuals. What dream? Bye-bye.